Thank you for your songs of worship. Thank you for your people that are gathering in today to give your name the glory, the honor, the praise, the thanks. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Be blessed today as we worship you, God. We bless you, and we praise you, and we give you all the glory. Welcome, y'all. Live is live now. Put it. Y'all know that's the first thing you're going to do. You should have just did that already. That's the first thing you're going to do. Live is live. Put it in the chat. We are excited. It's another day the Lord has made, and uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I hope y'all ready. Today, I'm ready. I'm ready. We've been on a roll. We've been on a roll lately. Something is happening every day. Y'all know I got to start off by saying thank you to all volunteers and everyone who's coming to serve. I'm coming down here. I'm seeing y'all. Y'all ain't playing with it. Y'all coming down here, picking up things, painting stuff, throwing it out, ripping it up. I went to the little lunch brunch space. The food wasn't even, you know how you just dog the food? The food wasn't even dog. Y'all coming to work. Thank you to everyone who served and everyone who volunteered uh, over this past week. Your, uh, uh, your, your generosity is not overlooked by us, and I know it is seen and will be rewarded, if not already, by God. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. There's something being done every day, y'all. Work is being done every day. We are building this temple, kind of like Nehemiah, rebuilding the wall. We are rebuilding the wall. So thank you all so much for, as I always say, your prayers. They are needed for your serving. It is needed. And for your giving, it is needed. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, y'all. I cannot wait very, very soon. I know I keep telling y'all, and I ain't going to keep teasing y'all. I'm telling y'all. Very, very soon we'll be, we will be announcing uh, when we'll be coming back together in our in-person worship experience. I cannot wait. I'm so tired of preaching to these walls, I don't know what to do. But I'll keep doing it to give you all the word of God. Speaking of that, let's get into it. Y'all know it's kind of this synonymity. <laughs> it's synonymous. The building of the church and the building of us. The building of the physical church and the building of the spiritual church. God is doing something synonymous with us here at Live, and it's just amazing to behold. Uh, we're, we're in a renovation season. Remember I told y'all, where the renovate book at? Renovate. That's where we're at right now. If y'all don't have that book by P. Tay, by my wife, get the book. It's on Amazon right now. It's called Renovate. It is right in line with where we are as a church body right now. Go to Amazon. Get Renovate by Shante Tribbett. It's a 40-day workbook, journal, devotional uh, that'll keep our minds renewed and keep us on track with the will of God for our lives in this season. This is not a shameless plug. It is divinely set up. Here it comes. Come on. Bring it on in. Thank you, sis. <laughs> I'll put it right here, y'all. Renovate is the book. It comes in black. It comes in white. She swagged out on it. You know what I'm saying? The back of that. You know what I'm saying? She swagged out. Good job, babe. Anyway. Get the book, Renovate, y'all, because that is like right in line with what we're doing here as a church body. It's on Amazon or wherever you get books sold or go to her page or whatever. you got to get this book. Let your mind be renewed daily. Just a little note daily, a little reminder daily, a little word daily. There's so much other content that takes our minds elsewhere. This is a daily reminder that will put godly content on your mind. Soon as you wake up every day. So get that book, y'all. Renovate. That's where we are now. Renovate. I woke up this morning. And I literally heard two words. And I said, okay, I'm just going to talk about that. So today is just an, it's an encouragement. I don't have a lesson, y'all. I had something planned. That's, that's scratch right now because I heard two words today. And I kind of want to speak from that just to encourage you. This is something you already know. This is something you've already heard me say a million times. But I believe it's something that you need to hear again right now as a reminder. I heard two words when I woke up. It was literally like, make it make it. I was like, whoa, make it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start talking about that. I started meditating on those two words, make it, make it, make it. So I want to talk from three perspectives very quickly. I always say that and it'd be two hours. So I ain't going to say that no more. <laughs> Put it in the chat, y'all. Make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. Three things. Make it happen. Make it work and make it through. Good God Almighty. That's all some of y'all need to hear. You can log off now. Thank you for your offering. Make it happen. 
Make it work. And make it through. Good God Almighty. Make it. Whatever one resonated with you the most, put that in the chat. If happen resonated with you, put make it happen. If make it work made it resonated with you, put make it if make it through, you gotta get through it. You're gonna make it through it. Make it through. Whatever one resonated with you, I'll give you a second to put it in there. Put it in the chat. Make it happen. Make it work. Make it through. This is God's word to us. Make it happen. Make it work. Make it through. One more time. Make it happen. Make it work. Make it through. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's where we at now. At the church, we making it happen. We making it work. We making it through it. I drove up today and the gut, the gutter fell. We got to get that gutter fixed. I'm like, Lord, we got to get that fixed. I got to make it happen. If it don't get fixed today, we got to make it work. And until it get fixed, we're going to make it through. It, we don't have no choice. And we have all we need to do it. Let me start this with Psalms. Psalms 115, verse 16. This is the TPT version, right? Psalms 115, verse 16. Look at this, y'all. It says, the heavens belong to our God. They are his alone, but he has given us the earth and put us in charge. Good God almighty. The heavens belong to our God and to him alone. They're his. But the earth he's given to us. He's put us in charge. That's Psalms 115 verse 16. Because the first thing I thought of when I heard make it, make it happen, make it work, make it through. I'm like, Lord, you smoke, you, you work it out. I got a song that got, I got a song about that. <laughs> he going to work it out. He going to work it out. And there are things that he does work out. But we are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. We're in partnership with God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is the works. Without faith, you got to work. Faith without works is dead. So there are some things we got to make work. And that's our faith posture. That's our faith gesture. And then God does what we cannot do when we do everything we can do. The earth belongs to us. He put us in charge. Woo! So essentially, whatever is dysfunctional in your life, half of it is God's responsibility. I'm just saying numbers out there. Half of it is ours. So we don't have the luxury to just pray about it and sit back and do nothing. Because that's not making it happen. You need harmony in your home, make it happen. You need unity in your marriage, make it happen. You need your kids to be obedient, in it. make it happen. That's not all God's responsibility. Move on their heart, God, touch them. Make sure that, no, you make it happen. Put forth the effort. Ooh, y'all, this is, I'm telling y'all, put forth the effort towards what you're expecting. My faith is my actions towards what I'm expecting. I'm going to say that again. My faith is my action towards what I'm expecting. In other words, I can tell what you're expecting by what you're doing. Ooh. <laughs> the thing you're making happen is the thing you, you're expecting in your lives. I can tell you're expecting God to move in a certain area because you're working on it. I can tell you're expecting God to move in your house because you're working on it. What you're working on exposes the area you have faith in God in. If you ain't doing nothing, you ain't got no faith. You ain't expecting nothing. But the devil is a liar. We're going to make it happen. All right, that's Psalms. I want to give you all that scripture, y'all. The earth is ours. He put us in charge. If stuff is going crazy, if God was real, he wouldn't allow what well, the earth. We're in charge of the earth. If God was real, that wouldn't have happened to me when I was seven years old. My uncle wouldn't have. My aunt wouldn't have. My parents wouldn't have. That wouldn't have happened. That car accident, that, that stray bullet, if God was real. Well, the earth belongs to man. It is a management issue, not an ownership issue. Good God Almighty. Are you hearing me? The earth is the Lord's, but he's given it to us to manage. So if there's dysfunction in any area, you have what it takes to make it happen to make it work and to make it through. Now that's a responsibility that we could be like, <sighs> but just man up. Last week was grow up. Man up, y'all. He says in Luke 10, 19, King James Version, behold, I've given you power. Look, look at God. Then what Jesus said this, I know he said it because it was in all red. <laughs> 
Jesus said this in Luke 10, 19. Be, he's the one that has all power. Jesus has all power and can change anything just by his word. He can pick up an ear and just put it back on without a surgery. But he says, I've given you power. Whoa. And that word power there means authority. Good God Almighty. So any pressure you are under, you're not expressing your authority over it. Hallelujah. Anything that overwhelms you, that's an area in our lives we're not exercising authority over. It's like a king answering to a slave when we're depressed. It's like a king. Oh, y'all, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's like a king responding to a peasant and listening and obeying a peasant when we are overwhelmed or when we are stressed. We are not exercising our authority over that voice whispering to us that it's too hard. It's too, no, make it through. I don't know. I'm just kind of going, some stuff I'm saying is make it through. Some stuff I'm saying is make it work. Some stuff I'm saying is make it happen. I'm, I'm sorry I don't have a categorized thing for y'all, but y'all make it work. <laughs> I've given you power. Hallelujah. To tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Depression is a power of the enemy. You got power over it. Uh, uh, overwhelm, stress, power of the enemy. You got power over it. Lust, perversion, anger. You got power over it. There's no excuse. Exercise your authority over that thing and make it happen. Make victory happen. Make overcoming happen. You Y'all get me excited. I got to walk. I got to walk. I, I was trying to stay in here because I like the walls. Y'all see the new walls? Every week something's getting done. Shout out to production. Carl, you're doing an amazing job. Every, I bet you he won't edit that out. I bet you he won't edit that out. <laughs> Anything in your lives that is not of God or that you don't want in your life, you, all you got to do is exercise your authority over it. You got power. Behold, I've given you power. I've already given it to you. I didn't give it to you because you prayed. Ooh. I didn't give it to you after you fasted. And there are, there is power increase after that. But this is a grace thing right here. I've given you power. You did not earn it. You did not work for it. Something's getting done every, every day, y'all. Something's getting done every day. You did not earn it. You did not work for it. But by God's grace, he's saying, I've given you. I've given you power. I just, I've gave it to you by my grace because I know what you're going to need. <sighs> my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. When God gives you supply is by his grace. He knows you're going to need authority over depression. He knows you're going to need authority over stress. He knows that. So he says, behold, I give you authority and power over all the power of the enemy and nothing Shell, these lights working. I'm a little dark skin. Let me get out of this. Let me get out of this dark space. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Hallelujah. So if there's anything harmful in your life, God is saying, I've given you an antidote for that. I've given you authority over that. Exercise your authority. Speak over that thing. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Stop speaking what you're going through and speak the overcoming side of it. Like, I'm tired of this. I'm sick of this. I'm, come on, you're using your power to increase the harm, to increase the turmoil, to increase the struggle, instead of using that power to rid your life of it. Hallelujah. Make it happen. Make it happen. Peace in your home. Make it happen. Stop saying I prayed for it and make it happen. Stop saying I've been praying over it. I've been. Make it happen. What can you do to increase peace in your home? Good God Almighty, help me with this word. What can you do to increase harmony and communication with your family and your spouse and your children. Besides, pray. Because prayer to us subconsciously puts the responsibility all on God. And God is saying, I gave you the earth. I gave you power. You make it happen. You make it work. You make it through. Period. The floors is getting done. Don't it look good, y'all? We making it happen here. Come, come, show, show them the floor. Show, show, come, come. Show, I, I, look at these floors. Look at that. It used to be carpet and church benches in here, but we making it happen and we making it work. People are coming here every day to do something to increase the work that's getting done here. What are you doing every day 
to increase what you're expecting in your life. You can't afford to let up. We can't stop here. We got to keep uh, uh, finishing the floor so we can put the chairs on it because it's not there yet. Just because you did something once, I was nice to my husband. I did that for her once. No, you got to keep preparing the ground. You got to keep doing what you need to do until it's ready and it's what you see. Uh-oh, I'm stepping on stuff in here. Uh, hey, this is, this is what it is. Make it happen. What do you mean make it happen? All right, let's do this really quick, y'all. Make it happen. What I hear for that is get a vision. Get a vision. Write a vision. Make it plain. Without a vision, people perish. If I'm going to make something happen, I got to have a plan. So it's not just a desire. We have desires and wants, but we have no vision and plans. That was powerful. Good God Almighty. I just want a happy marriage. That's a desire. What's the vision and the plan? I just want my kids to respect me. I want my, that's a desire. We got a whole lot of wants, a whole lot of desires, and maybe a whole lot of needs. But we don't have a whole lot of vision and a whole lot of planning. That's making it happen when you go from desire and dreams to vision and planning. Woo! <laughs> Say loud on that for a minute. My sneakers is coming apart. Woo! I know what you want, but what have you planned? Oh my goodness! I know what you desire, but what vision have you written for it? What meetings have you had? Have some meetings. Sit down, y'all. This is my desire. Sit down with your family. Sit down with your spouse. Sit down with your friends. Sit down with yourself. I'm not doing this self. What plans do you have to break addictions off your life? It could be a desire, but what, what plans do you have to break addictions off your life? Make it happen. Oh, my gosh. Jesus, help me with this word. Make it happen, y'all. Make it happen. Y'all can stay there. If they get in the shot, they get in the shot. There's always people here when we're recording, y'all, just so you know. So I'm going to get them in the shot on purpose. There they go. Just, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Make it happen. That means make a plan. Get a vision, y'all. You got to plan it. You got to get vision. You got to have those meetings. Make it work. Now I'm going to make it work. Make it work. Okay, I guess I am categorizing it a little bit. For what, for what I have for make it work, it says you have what you need to make it. Did you hear what I, did y'all hear what I just said? When I heard make it happen, I heard get a plan, get a vision. When I heard make it work, I heard you have what you need to make it work. That's encouraging and discouraging to me. Because I'm like, I, I don't see that I have, I don't, I don't see that. I, I, I don't see that. What do, what do you mean I have? I need, I need this. I, no, you already have what you need to make it work. Y'all know where I'm going. If you don't, Shame on you. Moses, I need you to go tell Pharaoh, whoa, 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 whoa. How am I going to do that? What's in your hand? He didn't ask Moses to create anything. He didn't ask Moses to start anything new. He didn't tell Moses to go to school and learn how to talk. You already got, what's in your hand? What's in your reach? What can you grab right now? Whether it's a jawbone of an ass or the staff of Moses, what do you have right now? You don't need more than what you have to make it work. Did you hear what I, I gotta slow down. You do not need more than what you already have to make it work. Ty, that don't make sense. You don't understand. This ain't enough. I got, yeah, I got, but it ain't enough. Yeah. There's an old song or saying that I used to, uh, at my old church, they say, little becomes much. When you place it in the master's hand, they don't know that. They, they young over here. They don't know that. They, 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 I don't have enough. You might not, but when you put it in the right hands, it multiplies like the fish and the loaves. That's what the little boy said. I don't have enough for the 5,000. Yeah, but just put it in my hands. What's in your hand? Put it in my hand, and it'll be more than enough. Good God Almighty. Maybe it's not enough because it's just in your hands. When you, oh my gosh. Maybe it ain't enough because it's just in your hands. But when you partner with the hand of God, he multiplies it. Hallelujah. And it becomes more than enough. Ty, I got a little bit of patience, man. Well, that's in your hand. Get that patience and say, Lord, help me. He'll increase your patience. Ty, I got a little bit of temperance, but after a while, I'll go back to my habits. Take that little temperance and say, Lord, help me. Have, 
partner and put it in his, his hand. Help me with my self-control. He'll increase it, and it'll be more than enough. That's the kind of God we serve. I don't have enough money. Same thing. I don't have, whatever you feel like you don't have enough of, God says, it's enough with me. It's enough love with me. Add me to the equation. I don't like saying add God, but y'all know, know what I'm saying. Make it work. Moses, what's in your hand? Here it goes. This is, this is, this is Exodus, I think, chapter three-ish, somewhere around there. He said, Moses, what's in your hand? A staff. He said, throw it down. It says, and, and God said, throw it down. He threw it down, and it became a serpent. Moses got sick, scared, and God said, pick it up. He picked it up, and it became a staff again. Do you see the pattern? And God said, put your hand in your bosom, and it became leprous. And God said, put your hand back, and it became whole again. Good God, I'm trying not to run around this place. Whatever God speaks to can become anything. <laughs> Moses, what's in your hand? A staff. Until I speak. Until I speak, it ain't enough. My word mixed with what's in your hand can become what you need. Good God Almighty. Woo! Woo! Good God Almighty. Your hand represents your work. So whatever you're working on mixed with the word of God can become everything you need. What's in your hand, Moses? And God said, and it became. And God said, and it became. And God said, and it became. Whoosh. That's how powerful God's word is in your marriage, in your family, in your finances, in your health, in your business, in your ideas. That's how amazing and powerful and God said is. Because then it becomes. Somebody put in the chat, I need a God said. <laughs> I need a God said. Put it in the chat. I need a God said. And God said, and it became. Because I need my situation to become something else. I need my atmosphere to become something else. I need my thoughts to become something else. I need my health to become something else. I need my resources and my finances to become something else. So give me a, and God said, please. And God said, and it became. He told the widow, the, the prophet went to the widow, excuse me for not re remembering which one, uh, she, her, her, her husband died and they were about to take her sons to the army because you know she had to pay her, her taxes or whatever, or something like that, excuse me for not knowing exactly. And the prophet came to her and said, well, how many vessels do you have? How many vase, vases or vases, I don't know how to say that, do you have? Go borrow vessels. Some of y'all don't have what you need because you don't want to ask nobody. Sometimes, uh-oh, I just hit a chord right there. <laughs> Maybe in order for you to make it work and make it happen requires you to ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, can I have some vessels? And the door will be open. If you don't ask, seek, or knock, that's not making it happen. So you got to swallow that pride, get a little vulnerable, be nice to people uh -huh, when you don't need them. Be kind to people when you don't need them so you won't be so afraid when you do. Come on, y'all. Borrow vessels. And God supernaturally supplied oil for every vessel she borrowed. She kept pouring this oil, and supernaturally it was just more oil and more oil, and she was selling it. She sold the vessels and the oil. And the Bible says... When she ran out of vessels, the oil stopped. She made it work. This is what I got right here. I'll ask my, she made it work and all her needs were supplied because she was willing to use what she had to make it work. One more story and I'm done. Elijah, I think the brook dried up. The ravens was feeding him. He was drinking from the, he went to the, the Shunammite woman, I think. And uh, she was making a cake, there was a severe famine. So she was just saying, I'm gonna make a cake and me and my son are gonna die. That's it, my son and I, we're gonna, we gonna die. This is our last meal and we're gonna die. And the prophet said, well, make it for me first. <laughs> what do you have? I only got this, well, give it to me first. And he represented, you know, the man of God. And the Bible says she made it, she gave it to him and she never lacked. 
She always had. She just opened the cupboard and saw more cereal. She opened the refrigerator and saw more eggs and bacon. She, provision came because she used what she had and gave it to God or the man of God. Good God Almighty, what do you already have? We want the new energy from something new because the, the honeymoon years are gone. Nah, that's why God sometimes renews a thing instead of giving brand new. But renew is brand new, essentially. <laughs> what do you already have that you can make work? Put it in the chat, make it work, make it work, make it work. All right, I'm done after this. Make it happen. You got the power to do it. No more excuses, y'all. Make it happen. Make it happen. Well, I desire, I see this, I, my dream is make it happen. Make it happen. Well, I need, make it happen. Well, this is all I have right now. Make it work. Make it work. This is what God is saying. He's not being insensitive. He's trying to activate some authority in you because that won't be activated if everything is given to you. But when you extend yourself and make it work, you grow into this authoritative boss. Put it in the chat. I'm a boss. It's time to boss up, Liv. I, you hear that bass in my voice? Y'all just, just got some bass out of me. Boss up. No excuses. Make it work. How can I make it happen? What's my plan? What's, what, what do I have in my hand? What's the plan? What I have in my hand? What's the plan? What I got in my hand? What's the plan? What I got in my hand? What's the plan? What I got in my hand? Make it work. Make it happen. Period. And then the last one. Make it through. Scripture that came to my mind was, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Afflictions are not just people talking about you, it's what you think about people talking about you. Affliction is not just sickness and pain, it's what you think emotionally. It's the emotional, mental torment connected to things you go through. Afflictions are not the things you go through, it's what you think and feel about it. That's the torment. Jesus was afflicted in the garden, and he didn't even go through nothing yet. But that was the affliction, the, the, his mental preparation. That's what it is. It means the mental struggle, the mental torment. That's what afflictions mean. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, because we're trying to live right in a wrong world. We're going to have a whole lot of God. What's going on? We're gonna, the president just got shot. Expert, what's going on? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but we make it through. We make it through. He delivers us out of them all. Can anybody, I know I say it all the time, but it's always true. Are you going through something right now? You might be like, yes, Ty. Is this the first thing you ever gone through? No. Did you make it out the last one? Yes. Stop playing with me. I'm trying not to run, y'all not here yet. You made it out the last one. You are designed to make it through. You are wired to win. Y'all remember that one? You're wired to make it through. The way your DNA is set up, you got victorious DNA. You have overcoming DNA. Jesus said, fear not, I've overcome the world. And the same blood, hallelujah, that was in our risen Savior is in you right now. You got overcomer's blood in you. Woo! Over, I got overcomer's blood in me. I know that's a long thing to put in the chat, but put something like that. I got victory blood. I got victory blood in me. I, I'm not, it's, it, the way it's set up, the way my victory is set up, I can't lose. Make it through. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9 says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed, because we're going to make it through the trouble. We are perplexed but not in despair, we make it through. Persecuted, but not forsaken, make it through. Cast down, but not destroyed, we make it through. You always make it through. Don't let this situation make you feel like it's it and it's over. You're gonna make it through in the name. I'm just trying to encourage y'all. I ain't trying to say no big words or nothing. You make it through. There's something in you screaming, make it through. And that's the Holy Spirit saying you can do all things through Christ 
that strengthens you. And I pray this word is strengthening you right now. Just gird up your loins, strengthen your back in the name of Jesus. Stand erect knowing who your salvation is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the, hallelujah. Woo, I feel this word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemy, when the wicked, even my enemies, my foe, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Because touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. We're troubled on every side, y'all, but not distressed. Don't stress out because of trouble. We're perplexed. We don't understand everything, but not in despair. We're not hopeless. Even though I don't understand it, I'm not hopeless. I don't get it right now, but that don't mean I'm hopeless or in despair in the name of Jesus. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Mm. Make it through, y'all. I also thought about, I have a few more notes here and I'm done. <laughs> the woman with the issue of blood. Man, she was like, my blood might not be right, by, right now, but my will is. <laughs> If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. I got an issue of blood, so my blood ain't acting right, but my will is. My spirit is right, so let me lean in. Use your strong hand in this season. <laughs> my blood ain't right, but my will is, so I lean into the strong hand. I'll crawl if I got to. I'll do what I need to do to make it through. She pressed through the crowd. Jesus was crowded by people. Everybody was getting to Jesus. And she shouldn't have been nowhere near the rabbi. But she made it through and touched the hem of his garment. What do you got to fight through to get what you need? Make it through in the name of Jesus. Uh, what I, what I got to say? Use what you got and make it. Last one. Paul, when he was shipwrecked in Acts 27, he stood up and said, y'all shouldn't have went this way. I told y'all not to go this way. You should have listened to me, but now we're in a storm. Some storms we're in is because we didn't listen. Some trouble we're in right now, some shakiness and uncertainties, is all because we didn't listen and we wanted to go the way we wanted to go. Paul was a slave on this ship and he should have been like, let me off. But he said, since I'm going to be on here, don't go that way. And they still went that way and ran right into a typhoon, tsunami type storm. So some calamity we cause on ourselves by not listening. So if I will say anything to you today humbly, and I'm talking to myself as well, listen, listen. Some storms you can't avoid, some you can. And if I can avoid any storms, I want to. He said, you should have listened to me and not suffered all this harm and loss. You should have listened. You should have listened. But it still ain't too late. I, done talk, I fasted and I talked to an angel and he said, you're going to make it. You're going to make it through. And by the end of chapter 27 in Acts, the Bible says, some on boards and some on broken pieces. They all made it to shore. <laughs> Woo! Even if your heart is, even if you're on a broken piece, still make it through. It ain't over, y'all. Grab your piece and make it. Get you a piece of mind and make it. I might not understand the whole story, but I know all things work together for good. That's the piece I'm going to sail on to make. What piece you got? This is my piece. What piece you got? What words you got? What hope you got? Grab your piece and make it through. Some on board, some on bigger planks, some on broken pieces. They all made it. Number one, don't get jealous of anybody else's peace. That's, all right, that's they board. That's they, don't get jealous. <laughs> they wish they had more too. Oh, my Lord. Good God Almighty. Anyway, they all made it through to the point where them barbarians on the other side thought they were gods. Like, y'all made it through that storm? You're gods. You're going to make it through and people are going to be so shocked that you made it. Live. I just came this morning to say two words to you. Make it. Make it. Make it happen. Make it work. 
and make it through. That is our responsibility partnered with the Holy Spirit. He's not going to just do it for us. He's going to do it with us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he's with us. You got Emmanuel. You got Emmanuel. This, you got Emmanuel. This is the season we do it with him. This is the season he don't do everything for us. This is not the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is God's armies, and he do it for, he do it for you. That's probably the next season or the last season. This season, if you're watching this, he's saying, do it with me. Make it work. Make it happen. Make it through. Get your board and make it, y'all. I think I might keep this as a souvenir. No, I'm not sure. Yeah. Samson threw it away after, after uh, he beat the thousand man. I love y'all permanently. You already know. I want you to see what's getting done here. Things is getting done. We making it happen. We making it work. And we making it through. No excuses and no room for failure. Failure is not an option. Put it in the chat. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. You're not wired to fail. You're wired to win. I just wanted to encourage you this morning, possibly tell you something you already knew, but with the spirit and the anointing of the living God, I pray that you were greatly blessed by what the Lord spoke to us this morning. Live, live, live essentially is saying make it. <laughs> live and not die. Make it, y'all. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Father, we thank you for the anointing to make it. We thank you for the, the, the strength to make it through, the wisdom to make it happen, the wherewithal to make it work. We give you glory, honor, and praise because none of your instruction is without you. You don't just send us away. You give us a word and then you're with us, strengthening us, encouraging us, giving us wisdom the whole journey. You're so good, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all permanently, as you already know. If you don't know, let me tell you again and again and again and again. I love you all so much. And on behalf of my wife and everybody else here at Live Church, y'all be blessed today. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Make it a good one. Make it a good one. Why not? Why not? Make it a good Sunday. Why we at it? Make it a good month. Why we at it? Make it a good week. Why not? Make it happen in the name of Jesus. All right. Be blessed. I love y'all permanently, as you already know. The Lord is with us. Therefore, we will not fail. Live.